with Jesus. Welcome everybody. Once again, we're still in parables with Jesus. Thank you for watching. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for being here in the spirit, ready to receive. I hope you're ready because God's about to bless you with some words and he's about to bless your soul. Amen. I believe this, this word is needed and, and God has given to us in a timely. Okay, we're going to be in Luke 11 verse 1 through 13. Luke 11 verse 1 through 13. All right. Once again, though, before we start, share this. All right. Put a watch party, do whatever you got to do, whatever social media, uh, share it, you know, send a text. Let somebody know about this. Amen. You don't want to keep the blessings all to yourselves. The blessings are, are, are to receive and then to give to others as well. The more you give, the more you will receive. Amen. The more God will bless you with. So before we get into it, let us pray. Dear God, we just want to thank you, Lord God. We want to Thank you for waking us up this morning, Lord God. We want to thank you for giving us life, Lord God. We want to thank you for everything that you're doing, Lord God. All the hitting things that we do not know that you're working out, Lord God. You're working things out, Lord God. We sometimes don't understand uh, uh, what's going on, Lord God, but you have a bigger plan. So, so God, open up our hearts, our minds, our, our, our ears, our bodies, our hearts to receive your word this morning, Lord God, to receive your spirit, to receive your salvation, Lord God, to receive all that you have for us in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Luke 11, 1 through 13. All right. And, and, and here's the thing. There's a parable in the middle of this. Okay. There's a parable in, in verse 5 through, uh, I believe it's verse uh, 5 through 8. But, okay. I have to read before and then we have to go to after so you can understand the, 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 the parable and what it's talking about. So we have to read the whole thing, all right? There's so much in there. So we're going to get in it, all right? There's so much. Watch this. Now it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place where he sees that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. So he said to them, when you pray, say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our sins. For we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And I'm reading out of the King James, the new King James Version. All right. So it might be a little different in the NIV and uh, uh, or, or, or the King James, all right? It's just a little different, but uh, I would suggest for you to go back and forth and read them both, amen? So it says here, right? It says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Okay, something that you have to understand in here, okay? In those days, no one dared to call God the Father. Okay, he was a distant God. He wasn't a close God. Okay, so no one, not, not the Pharisees, not the Sadducees, no one called them Father when they prayed. See, Jesus is breaking boundaries right here. He's bringing you closer. He's saying, call him Father. Be like his child and call him Father. He's bringing you closer to God. See? So he's breaking the boundaries and bringing us close to God. And then it says, hallowed. What does hallowed mean? Hallowed means holy. It means consecrated. It means sacred. Amen? It means set apart. So God is holy. He's pure. He's all good. Amen? He's great and greatly to be praised. See, this is a praise and worship call right there. When you're saying, holy is my God, you are worshiping your God. He is set apart. He is, there is none like him. He is the great I am. He is, the, right? Whoo! I'm going to get fired up. So I got I to teach some stuff here. So I got to calm down a little bit. But see, when we pray, we're getting close. We are worshiping God. It is a closeness. Right? And then it says, uh, uh, it says, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Right? 
Whose will? My will? Your will? Right? No. God's will. Right? Not, not, not my will. Not, not, not David's will. Right? Because my will might be different than God's will. Oh. See? So, and it says, God's will be done on, on earth as it is in heaven. Amen? On earth as it is in heaven. What is that? So God's will be done. Not our will, but God's will. And then it says, uh, it, it talks about, give us this day our daily bread, right? God, God will meet your daily needs. He, God is a provider, amen? He will meet every need, right? Now, wants are a different story. There's a difference between wanting and needing, okay? If my little one says, Dad, I want a car, and I give her a car, and she doesn't know how to drive, and she, she starts driving and crashes it, was I being a good father? No. Sometimes to be a good parent, you must deny your kids if they're not ready for those things. That's what being a good parent is. It's sometimes saying no. You're not ready for it. When you're ready for it, then we'll talk about it, right? So that's why we have to pray God's will, not our will, but God's will. See? And then it says this, what? And then it says, and forgive us of our sins, for as also we forgive everyone who is indebted to us. Or forgive us of our sins as we forgive others who sin against us, right? So, if we're going to be asking God the Father to forgive us because we have wronged, we sin every day, we, we, we do dumb stuff, right? And so we must ask for forgiveness, but if we're going to ask for forgiveness, then we must practice what we preach and forgive those who wrong against us. Uh, that's a, you can preach a whole sermon on that one because that one's, that one's a little hard. It gets a little hard, right? You want to hold grudges, but we got to forgive. We have to forgive. Amen? I was telling my wife this morning, uh, 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 you know, I usually make my coffee and there's sugar right there. And, I, and I, I'm, I'm a pretty guy. I'm a guy that likes everything to be in the order that it is. That way I know where it's at. I know what I'm doing every day. Right? And, and my wife moved it. So she moved it. And I'm like, ah, I can't find what I need. And so I had to forgive her. And I'm a good guy, so I forgave her. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not a good guy. Amen. No one's good but God. Amen? But we must forgive each other. All right? Don't hold grudges. Amen? So, and then it says, deliver us from evil or deliver us from the evil one. Right? Deliver us from sin, our sinful nature. Deliver us from the sinful traps that the evil one has for us. Keep us safe, Lord God. Right? That's what it's saying. Keep us safe from the traps, from the temptations. Because not everything the devil does, sometimes it's just our fault. It's our evil desires that we might, that we might have. Okay? So it's a pretty simple prayer. God's will be done. Right? So check this out. Then we go to verse 5. And he said to them, which of you shall have friends and go to him at midnight and say to him, friends, friend, lend me three loaves for a friend of mine has come to me in his journey and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within and say, do not trouble me. The door is now shut and my children are in are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give to you. I say to you, though he will not rise and give to him because he is his friend, yet because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. 
Now, key word, needs. Not wants, needs. Amen? We're talking about needs. So, this person, see, and this, this is the parable now. So this person, right, went to his friend's house, and he's knocking in the middle of the night, in the darkest hour, in the middle of the night, he's knocking at his friend's house, asking him for some bread. Now, you have to understand some, some customs back then, okay? If somebody came to visit you, you would have to treat them like royalty. It was your duty to treat them like royalty. You would invite them in, you know, have good hospitality. You would uh, give them a place to stay. You would give them some food and something to drink. Those were the customs. You had to treat your guests like royalty. Amen? And so those were the customs. All right? And then another thing that you have to understand that... Uh, back then when you had a house, so this other, the, his friend had a house, he was asleep, he said his children are in bed, everybody's asleep, right? The door is locked, everything. In those days, they didn't have houses like we do now, or should I say like we have in America, are multiple rooms. Back then, they only had one room, one little square piece, right? And it was your, your kitchen, it was your living room, it was your bedroom, everything, Right? And so if he got up, the whole house would be getting up because he would make some noise, everything, everybody would be up, right? And then Jesus went and said, he's not going to get up because he's a good friend to you. He's going to get up, right? What did he say? Watch this. I say to you, though he will not rise and give to him because he's a friend, yet because of, it, of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. So not because he's a good friend, but because of the persistence that the, the person outside is knocking, asking him. Persistence. Sometimes you got to be persistent in your prayer that you begin to wake up all the angels, that you begin to wake up heaven. Ah, thank you, Jesus. So you got to be persistent. You got to be passionate with your prayers. You got to be persistent in them. Right? And it's not saying that, uh, that, that you're being persistent because you're going to change God's mind. No. Because when you become persistent and passionate, you get closer to God and it changes your will to God's will. I don't think you understood that. I don't think you understood that. See, God wants you to be passionate and persistent in prayer. Not because God needs to be persuaded, okay? But because your passion and persistent in prayer will change us to align with God's will. The closer you get to God, spiritually in prayer, the more like-minded you'll be with God in physical body. Mm, I hope you got that. The, see, this is a spiritual. When you, get, when, you, when you get to pray in a spiritual, you begin to get close to God. And when you begin to get close to God, you feel the presence of God. When the presence of God comes on you, you begin to change and transform more like God. Not that you're going to be God, but your mind will begin to transform. It's no longer what I want, but Lord, what is your will to be done on this earth? Not my will be done, but your will be done. See, when Jesus laid it on the cross, he told his father, not my will, but your will be done, Lord God. He asked God, if you can take this cup from me, so if there's any other way, let's do it another way. But if not, God, let your will be done. Because I know that you have a plan. See? When we pray, we should be in, in, in contact with God in alignment with what God's will is. Thank you, Jesus. Now watch this. Verse 9. Because you got to get the, the last of it. Watch this. Verse 9. So I say to you, ask, and this is Jesus still talking, 
So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks will be opened. If a son asks for a bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? Or if he then be... If you then, being evil, that's right, he called us evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? See? If my kid asks me for an egg, will I give him a scorpion? No, I'm going to give him an egg. I'm going to give him what they need. Amen? Now, can, God, can you ask God for your wants? Yes, absolutely. You can ask God for what you want. But understand, sometimes if you don't get it, do not throw a fit. Do not throw a tantrum. Because you are not ready to receive that gift yet. So keep persistently praying that you're aligned with God's will. God will, and, and, and you have to understand something, okay? When God gives to you, so you could ask for a want. And when God gives to you, Okay, he is a good heavenly God. Listen, just like my wife is a good wife, when I ask her for a small little plate of food, she abundantly throws and she brings me this huge master plate for the whole world to eat. She's a good wife. That's what God does. When you ask him for something, he doesn't just give you that little bit. He just piles it on your plate. And he gives you abundantly more than enough that you could ever ask for. Ah, he's a good God. See? But he will not give you more than what you can handle. So you have to understand the difference. Sometimes we want something and it doesn't go through. You weren't ready. It's okay. Ask for you to get prepared so you can be ready. Amen? It's like I'm not going to, if, if, if my kids want to work out, right? If they want to work out, I'm going to give them a little three pounder or five pounder. I'm not going to give them a hundred pounds to lift. They can't handle that much. See? They might want to lift that much, but they can't. So see, now, lastly, what I want to say is this, okay, because I know there's some people out there with, saying, I know there's some people out there saying, prayer doesn't work, right? They'll say, oh, David, if, if Pastor David, if prayer works, then how come there's so much suffering in the world? How come, how come there's so much killing? How come there's so much bad things happening around the world? Right? There's people hungry. There's people suffering. There's people lonely. There's all these things happening around the world. And if God hears prayer, how come he's not hearing them? Well, this is, this is it right here. That is not God's will. Okay? That's why he said, pray that God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You think heaven is having all those problems that we have here now? No. Heaven is blessed. Heaven is magnificent. So if God's will was being done in this world, then we wouldn't have all that. But that is not God's will. That is the will of our sinful nature. That is the will of our lust desires. That is the will of our faults. When we have something to give to somebody, instead of being greedy, we, 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 we be, we're greedy and we don't give it to them. Right? That's people on this earth. See? But that's not God's will. So if everybody was praying and everybody was doing God's will, then we wouldn't have none of that. But it's not God's will. It's people's will. It's evil desires will, right? It's the desires of, of evil people. 
See? Thank you, Jesus. And you might say, well, if God is all powerful, how come he doesn't fix it? He wants to. He wants to fix it. But understand this. How he fixes it is through you. Through me. So today, he's asking you, will you let God's will be done upon your life? You could either be part of the problem or be part of the solution. And if you're complaining about the problem, then be part of the solution and start doing something for God's will. Today is the day that he's asking you, will you let him in your heart so he can transform his will upon your life so that maybe you can help somebody in need so that maybe you can be the di the difference of somebody suffering thank you jesus we all have that sinful tendency to do our own self selfish desires if somebody goes to Vegas, instead of seeing a homeless man and gives him some money or help, helping them out, they'll go to the slot machine and try to win a million dollars. And he can say, well, I, I'll help him when I win that million dollars, but no, you won't because you won't even help him with the dollars. So when you have a million dollars, you won't even help him anymore. So will you let God's will be done upon your life? He wants to use you. That's how he works in this world. He works through people. He worked through Moses. He worked through Abraham. He worked through David. He worked through Jonah. Amen? Time and time again, God uses people just like you. People that come short of God's glory. We're not perfect. But God still wants to have a great relationship with you and wants to use you for his will, for goodness on this earth. Will you let him today? I pray that you do. If that is you, we're going to pray that God's will be done upon you and your children's lives. Upon your family. Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you for this marvelous word, Lord God. Let your will be done upon our lives, Lord God. Open up our hearts, Lord God, from deceit, Lord God, from the traps of the enemy, Lord God. Let your will be done upon our lives, Lord God, that we may help others in need, that we may make the difference in this world, Lord God, that before we go home to your throne, Lord God, we would make a difference in this world with our lives. We thank you, Lord God, and we ask for your will to be done, Lord God. But before we go, all right, I want to pray for those that are sick right now, all right, because it is God's will to heal you. Jesus went around healing everybody. It was God's will for you to be healed. Amen. So right now, Lord God, we come against uh, uh, spiritual e evilness, Lord God. Lord God, uh, bless those who, who are, are sick right now, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we rebuke any sickness out of their bodies right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We thank you for everything that you're doing. We thank you for your healing power, Lord God. We thank you that you are reaching right now, wherever they're at, and you're touching them right now. We thank you for that. In your precious name, amen. Again, thank you for watching. If, that, if this message has blessed you, again, share it. Go to our website. Let us know. Watch the other ones. Until next time, God bless you. See you again. Have a great day.